This is the fourth annual Audio court Face Court Packing baby. episode. So we jump is, in it. Yeah, this is episode 169, which gives 100. me the unfortunate realization that you'll be hosting the Audio Face Awards. Um, but actually, you've hosted most of the Audio Face Awards episodes, so that's fine. I also hosted the uh, 50s of the 10th. So pretty, or like we kind of, we actually no, we went back and forth on the 50s of the 10th. And also literally all the audio, audio Face Awards episodes have been even. So. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, um, should be fun. Don't we fuck have, it up. <laughs> we have some court packing to do here every year. Yep. Of course, we kind of mentioned at the top of the show, every year we have albums that we couldn't get to throughout the year because we listen to a lot of albums, music and there's EPs only so much we can do. Yeah, exactly. Albums, EPs, whatever came out. And so we want to acknowledge artists, but we're not going to do something where we bring up something that no one's ever heard about in the award show because that's some Grammy shit. Exactly. So this is the last chance. These last 20 minutes or so is when we're going to do all the chord packing of the albums we didn't talk about. And usually, like, this is when I'll do, like, a little bit of, like, um just make it look different so it doesn't look like you copied kind of looking at some of the other websites with their like album lists and we reviewed most of the things that like made it on like, yeah, the top 25, 50 albums list so we don't have to re-mention them here a lot of them are good a lot of them are not but we have award shows for that but these are just things that we totally did not mention for whatever reason and which we didn't have time or, or wasn't it was issue there's a lot of other things because there's sometimes i like i like we were, i had things i'm like dan i really want to talk about this we just don't have time okay i'll put in court packing yeah um for example we have bad bunnies y h l q m d l g which stands for yo hago lo que me de la gana which in great spanish i do whatever i want yeah um, it was a Bad Bunny album that was released on my birthday this year, mm -hmm. so I was extremely busy. And it, it, my birthday is also like a very busy time for music in general yes, every for, single year. So very beginning of March yeah. is always big time music yes. releases. And we tried and to that's do. Side, and I think that's like the weekend came out, I believe that time, and a bunch of others came out that time. So there's a yeah. lot. Um, we tried to do a better job, and we'll continue to do a better job of broadening our reach of what songs we review and what like artists we review on Audio Face to make sure we're definitely covering more of like the broadly speaking, Latin world of music. Um, I know we did a lot of J Balvin this year, but this is definitely something I missed. And there's well, I know, a lot I know of he released tweet. another album this year. Because the thing too with Bad Bunny is he releases a lot of music. Yeah, he released an album earlier this year. It's more like an EP, um, and it's not that great because it's like a compilation album. And again, like you, you, it, it, it's the, the same thing in like a transcends languages. You can only make a certain amount of albums at a certain period of time without like some quality being dipped. But I think of the two that came out this year, the one from earlier this year is a lot better. You get like a reggaeton general thing, um, like Puerto Rico, a lot of those sort of like styles mm -hmm. and vibes in that. But you are also getting um, a lot of like dipping in the trap, dipping into mm -hmm. R&B. A, a lot of not exactly the same levels of experimentation Kid Cudi did, but like you came from the album going, wow, he's actually going for like a couple different genres here and pushing this like reggaeton trap thing in a lot mm -hmm. of different interesting ways. Um, so I was definitely really impressed by that. Um, shout out to friend of the show Anna for bringing that up. As well, I know there's a song to. he did. Uh, let me look for it right now. That he did with. Um, there's like probably a couple he did this year, but there was one with Daddy Yankee that I know that I've heard a, a bit and stuff around um, on like reggaeton playlists and other stuff um, around in the, in the Spanish cultures because we yes. are cultured here in Audio Face. Uh, La Santa, there we go, with uh, uh, Bad Bunny, Daddy Yankee. That was on that album that I did hear a bit this year. Yeah. Damn right. Um, but yeah, it's all a really good album. Um, if I had to pick like something I liked off of there, and there's a lot. Ignorantes was a really popular song on there, but I think my favorite is actually in the beginning, La, Dif La Difficile. Okay. Um, it's just, it brings you into the style pretty easily. Um, and yeah, he's just got a really good flow that even if you're not like a fluent Spanish speaker and I get like 60 to 70% of what's mm -hmm. said in any of these given songs, it's a really nice, like, interesting thing you don't often get in the traditional albums that we would review of a similar genre. Um, so it's nice, and shout out to Bad Bunny for, like, mm -hmm. putting in some actual, like, really good work over these past couple of months with this album. Like I said, I heard the compilation album, not as good. Maybe take a chill with it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But um, this was definitely good. Sean, awesome. your turn. So my first is an album that literally just came out, but we didn't, or an EP that came out that we just weren't able to talk about. Um, it is Foster the People. They released In the Darkest of Nights, Let the Birds Sing. It's the EP that came out um, of this recording about three days ago. Um, it so features six Lambs songs, Wool, which I'll let you continue, but yeah. Yeah, it does. It's six songs, 24 minutes long. Yeah, and so you know my thing with uh, Foster the People, right? 
for, uh, for for folks at home who aren't keeping who, score. Who, who, who aren't keeping score, who aren't old audio face heads, maybe a new audio face uh, listeners. Welcome. welcome to our glorious podcast, all for the people, by the people. Rate us uh, five stars in iTunes. <laughs> please. Um, and Spotify. <laughs> and tell Daniel Eck to eat a dick. Um, anyways, anyways. So, <laughs> the reason, the, the thing uh, you have with Foster uh, people, the, the, it's complicated. It's, co- yeah, I really enjoy the early stuff. Their last album, uh, Sacred Hearts Club, that came in 2017, was the original sellout of all of the indie bands, where a lot of them tried this trap sound, and it just leaked into a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, Doing It For The Money was a song that, like, it just spread like wildfire to a bunch of alternative uh, rock bands, a lot of indie bands that I enjoyed, and just, and then the quality of indie and stuff went to shit for a couple of years. I feel like it, after it, that and with a lot of retrospect it's like foster the people went from this really cool like subversive band doing songs like pumped up kicks yep. to like trying to imitate maroon 5 pretty much and it went and it was horrible but this ep is a return to form every song in here fantastic really really good i like walk with a big stick it starts out how's like it almost has like a beach boys meets disco theme like it's a really weird thing to uh, ex- like explain but they like, the way they layer their voices and everything is a fantastic little song to get you into it um it does feature lamb's wool which i really enjoy too yeah we did we talk about it as a single, about single and it was exactly. pretty incredible and i was like holy crap they're getting back let me see if they do anything other stuff and this holy p is such a return to form for foster the people like this gives me hope that, granted, uh, this year to me feels like the year of indie music where it just, it's been lackluster for a long time and there's been so much out this year where it's just like, oh my god, I, I can't absorb I mean, everything. Not just to tutor on horn, but to exactly tutor on horn. We mentioned that rock music, part of its like quote unquote death in like the late tens, is the fact that there's a lot of room in indie to take that and run with it and make mm-hmm. a lot of wild things. Mm-hmm. We saw um, Foster People like just with this start to grow from what they were but to an extent they were almost part of the problem they were they were yeah. they were a big, big pro- part yeah. of the problem but they resolved their issues and made a very good ep where it's like wow like you totally did a complete you did a 180 and then you reverted the 180 and did a 360 and made it better like it's just it's something you never see in music it's so, incredibly rare where you have someone who a prominent band make something that is shit, deviate away from it, but then return back to what their old sound was, but still push it forward enough to make it good. We call that the Coldplay. We called that, yeah. They did it. They did Coldplay better than Coldplay did Coldplay. Fantastic mm, it's album. Kind of It's really good. Yeah. Court packed it is. Um, Bernard Bernard, a uh, really sort of interesting artist. I kind of first sort of heard um, of his song on Freefall, the K Trinata album. I'm sorry. The song was called Freefall from Kay Trinata's recent album, Bubba, that is super um, plastered into the Audio Face Awards this year. Even though it came out in late 2019, mm. it was after our court pack episode. Yeah, so, so exactly. It was the one it's the like first how, It's like how Storm, Storm Disease was late December, or how we did I Am Greater Than I Was for last year, so even though it came yeah. out two years ago. Like, it's just how it works. People may not know this from the singles rule, but we actually do have rules that we keep on Audio Face. Yes. But um, that is to say, like, He's got a really interesting sort of sound and what like he's going for. It's trap and being like a thing you'd be kind of familiar with, but there's still this like sort of growing from it. It almost sounds like I remember describing a while ago there's like futuristic, almost like robotic um warehouse like pop or like okay. R and B almost where the percussion noises are very muted and echoey mm-hmm. and you feel like you're almost in like a futuristic just like lobby or a warehouse somewhere but it's just like really nice sounds um stuck featuring ari linux who i also really love um was on there and exemplifies that sound really nicely um yeah there's just a lot of all my court backing picks just tend to be things that are i didn't get to for the summer for whatever yeah. reason but they're kind of slower got a really nice soul thing and pack a lot of depth that i wouldn't have expected mm-hmm. from the album both of them have done incredible voices just can't be said enough um definitely check out stuck from the Carver. album Dur and <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one way to say it yeah um my next one you have the japanese house with chewing cotton wall ep um we have talked about her extensively on this podcast one of my favorite indie artists out of um england um, we did talk about her album last year, Good of Falling, which I like. There is still some things in there that I wanted her to improve upon and like push some stuff forward and whatnot. 
Um, but the Chewing Cotton Wool EP is, there's a lot of good stuff in here. It's only four songs long. It has one of my favorite indie songs of the entire year, which is Something Has to Change. Absolutely love that track. It is one of my favorite tracks that she's done, and it's really showing like the evolution of her as an artist, and it's really, she's starting to really land on her feet with everything that she's made over the past five, six years of her career, and it's making me look forward to more of her stuff. Um, you have, um, you also have Dion featuring Justin Vernon, um, who uh, had a Bon Iver, and that's a good little like experimentalness for her because usually her stuff is really quiet and like kind of laid back and stuff, but with Donnie it's more of like experimenting out and doing a little bit more of like those drum beats that was like um, industrial drum beats and stuff. So it's a sound that from her that I haven't really heard before too much and it's cool to see her branching out a little bit more. And then you have Chewing Cotton Wool which is like a slow, kind of just your typical the Japanese house where it's like slower, her vocals really um, pronounced and, and really low pitch because that's her vocal range tends to be. Um, and then Sharing Bed, which is the opening track, is again kind of like, like slower thing into it, getting into something else to change. But for a short little EP with her, I was something that like I didn't want to talk about too much or whatnot on the podcast because at that time when it came out in August, we had so much crap out in August. It just got overlooked because we had a lot of singles and other stuff. But I really, I have listened to something else to change a shit ton this year. So it's something that I wanted to bring up this year. Um, she's a fantastic artist. So really like her stuff. My last one, uh, typical audio face fashion coming in like literally last minute. Well, last second. Because it came to my head as you were talking and I was like, okay, Sean, you're doing great. Keep vamping. Let me figure yeah. this out. Um, this is Whipped Cream with her album, Who is Whipped Cream? I'd basically say um, she is like Rez on the Rising. A younger version, kind of more likely to collaborate with rappers in more of like a Rico Nasty kind of way where it's a little bit kind of wild in that sense. Um, What's the album? Uh, Who is Who Whipped, is Whipped Cream, Cream? Okay. Whipped Cream. Um, and yeah, sometimes it gets really trappy depending on the artist, like there's Do I with Mulatto and Baby Goth, right. but sometimes it gets like downright Rez-like. Um, I like opening track Us. this goes hard. Yeah, the Told Ya, which is kind of in the bottom. Lil Xan. Yeah, with Lil Xan. It's weird because it's kind of trappy, but during the middle parts, it sounds like almost like a res produced song. It's very interesting. And I don't know if, again, like this is the, I don't know if I'll give this like album of the year, but for uh, what, what is my Dictator Dan's? Dictator Dan's um, picks. Honorable yes. mentions. Honorable this is mentions, definitely something yes. I want to mention here because, um, I mean, something we talked about slightly is just like female DJs have it a little bit kind of rough around yeah, yeah. and they're doing a lot of creative shit that doesn't always get highlighted as much. So um, whipped cream is pretty sick. I also just got to generally check out Ari Lennox more broadly because I keep running into um, stuff that Ari Lennox is featured on, but like to listen completely is something I need to do. Plus, looks like there needs to be a new album coming out soon. Mm -hmm. I'll be looking forward to that. Um, but that brings us to the last thing we'll be court packing. Which is one of my favorite electronic music makers, Kolsch. Um, he is a Danish producer that is on, I believe he's on Dead Mouse's label, I'd like to say. Um, he, we did talk about his, um, one of his trilogy albums, 1989 and 2017. And this was his first proper release, because you had one of his other things that's just a bunch of demos. But this is his first proper release since 1989. And I had some issues with 1989, like I talked about it because 1977 was one of my, it's still one of my favorite uh, electronic albums of all time ever made. And his album, Nowhere, uh, Now Here We, Now Here Nowhere, which is really hard for me to say, because it's trippy, yeah. is one of my favorite electronic albums of the entire year. And I say something, there's been a lot of good stuff out there. It's an album that came out in um, September and I've been wanting to talk about it and stuff, but so, you know, late September to now, it's just literally we've had no time. Everything yeah. else has been basically booked up already. So I never got to talk about it. Top to bottom, it is fantastic. Great Escape starts off the album, like, um, with this beautiful, like, a beautiful beat in the background, like, similar to 1977 in a way, but still pushing a little bit more forward. Because the stuff with Kolsch, a lot, like, there are songs to me that can be filler and stuff within his work. There is no filler in this entire album. Every little song 
uh, uh, fits together. Every song is about like three to four minutes long, and all of it is a banger, basically. It's just really good club mixes, a lot of good garage, a lot of good house, a lot of good stuff that's like dead mouth sound in a bit. It's crisp, it's clean, and this is, to me, the best album he's done in his career so far. Every little bit of it is really, really good. After Great Escape, I showed of the Giants, which is really one of my favorites on here. Um, going back down, you have Sleeper Must Awaken, which almost sounds like Blue Screen of Death um, sound, where it's like this little beat in the background and stuff, um, really fast drums, really fast cymbals going on in the background. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really enjoy this. Going down a little bit further, um, you have Tra Traumfabrik, which means dream fabric, for those of you who don't speak German, which he does a lot of German uh, so like uh, song titles, even though it's Danish. So I don't know if, oh, why he does that, but no I, always, I always um, appreciate it. But overall, it's a very outstanding electronic album. It's something that I've been listening to since it's come out, like a repeat. I put it on a couple of my um, EDM playlists and stuff. And you know me as someone who's extremely picky with my electronic music, it just ticks all the boxes for me. That's It's really hard for me to find an EDM album that sounds almost like a DJ mix without being basically a straight copy of something and then without also being a lot of filler but yeah fantastic super rare very very good album I'm definitely gonna check that out I'm always looking for it's a I'm always looking for good electronic music like that and yeah, it it's only a, it's all it's an hour and six 12 songs long so it's not overly overtly long either yeah. which is good and it's gonna be a very competitive year for electronic that's it for sure. is 100 percent that's it that's it that's all that, that that's the year that's it folks that's the year of Audio Face that we have just done. We'll have the Audio Face Awards. It's looking like it'll come probably Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, around that kind of vibe. We'll give you a Christmas present, you know, just quick a little Audio Face for y'all. You know, yeah. when since you know you can't you, you can't uh, visit family and have that one racist uncle go mental on you, and you you could just escape to your room after your Christmas presents or whatever yeah. things you celebrate and then get put on two some and a half audio hours face. of whatever the hell audio face awards is going to be. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the last episode of the year yes. in that sort of context. So um, we will be returning with regular episodes next year, um, probably in mid January. And that will be just the general thing. Maybe if I'm feeling nice and I have some free time, I'm not going to promise it. I'll drop some bonus episodes yep. of audio face. Um, I've just some like best of clips that we've done throughout the years. And we have so many different bonus episodes. Last yeah. year, during the break, we did 50 of the 10s, our best album rankings of that. So there's plenty of audio face to go and check back on if you haven't kept up with us every single week. But um, until about a week and a half from now, in the Audio Face Awards, this is goodbye. Um, Sean can be found on Twitter and Instagram at SW Suarez. Mm -hmm. I can be found on Twitter at Dan from the Web, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Dan from the Web, on Instagram at Dan from the Internet, and at YouTube, youtube.com slash Dan from the Internet. The entire show can be found at Audio Face Pod. Make sure you're locked there, especially youtube.audioface.show, where we will put as much as YouTube allows us to of the um, award show up for y'all. Um, it should be exciting. We're looking forward to putting it together. Um, we've got a lot of music to listen to, but it's good music, so there are worse things to yeah. do on this podcast. Oh, for sure. Thank you all for listening to this uh, long boy, and we will talk to you in a week and a half or so. Cheers. Bye. And now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, hologram back. <laughs>